Hi, this is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome all of you to our evening services for Sunday, uh, March the 6th. Uh, per usual, we'll be singing several songs, observing the Lord's Supper, and I'll have a short message for each of us that hopefully will uh, spur us to think and uh, give us uh, some uh, something to uh, use this evening, maybe, that we can research on. And so, uh, if you would, we're singing from Songs of Faith and Praise, and if you do not have that book, I will mention the name of the song, so if you have your device with you, you can Google it if you want to sing along with us. The first song is entitled, Father of Mercies. <clears throat> Father of Mercies, it is number 51 in Songs of Faith and Praise. Number 51, Father of Mercies. <clears throat> Father of mercies, day by day my love to Thee grows more and more. Thy gifts are strewn upon my way like sands upon the great seashore. Like sands upon the great seashore. Father of mercies, God of love, whose gentle gifts all creatures share. The rolling seasons as they move Proclaim to all thy constant care Proclaim to all thy constant care Father of mercies, may our hearts ne'er overlook thy bounteous care. But what thy Father's hand imparts, still on in grateful praise and prayer, still on in grateful praise and prayer. Number 991, the title is this is my father's world. <clears throat> 991, this is my father's world. <clears throat> This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest in the thought. Of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, is and the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, the birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily white, declare their Maker's praise. This is my Father's world, but He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. 
This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. And before we take <coughs> of the Lord's Supper, turn to number 334. 334. Tis midnight and on olive's brow. Tis midnight and on olive's brow. We'll sing the first three verses, verses one through three. Tis midnight and on all this brow The star is dim that lightly shone Tis midnight in the garden now the suffering Savior prays alone. Midnight, when uh, Jesus met on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and then uh, he convened in the upper room, and they observe what we've come to know as the Lord's Supper. We sometimes call it communion. In Spanish, we call it Santa Cena, and uh, it is the time on the first day of the week because we are instructed to do so that we gather about the Lord's table in remembrance of Jesus Christ, in remembrance of what he did uh, on the cross for each one of us. We know that in the Old Testament, uh, the people were required to make sacrifices of animals, sometimes of grains, and these sacrifices were uh, atonement sacrifices. Now, as Jesus made his one-time sacrifice, this was not only an atonement sacrifice, this was a sacrifice that was made for the forgiveness of our sins, 
This was a sacrifice that was made so that grace could come upon us and that we could one day live with our God eternally. So as we gather about the table, help us to remember through these emblems uh, what Jesus uh, suffered and uh, that he did it for each one of us. Let's pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we know that Jesus' innocent body hung painfully upon the cross of Calvary, and they gave his body up as a sacrifice, as uh, God had deemed it, that uh, this sacrifice was uh, one for each one of us, that he gave up his life that we might live. As we for partake of the bread, help us to remember that broken body. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. We know that this fruit of the vine is a emblem or symbol of the blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. As the song that we sing, uh, the refrain of the song says, there is power in the blood. It is a life-giving power. It is a forgiving power. And so as we think of the blood that flowed down Jesus' side and from his hands and feet and his head, we think of uh, the life uh, just leaving his body, but leaving it so that you and I might one day live with him, with the Father. Bless us as we partake of the cup. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, for convenience sake at this time, we think about giving back to the Lord that which he has blessed us. This is also commanded of us in the Bible. And there are many, many uh, examples of giving uh, that have been rendered in our New Testaments. And uh, the giving uh, went all the way back, all the way back to Abraham when Abraham gave a part of what he had back to the Lord. And uh, that, is not, that has not stopped over the years. Uh, as New Testament Christians, we are also to give back to the Lord. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, several aspects of this that we must consider. We must consider that the church has a mission here on earth, and it is through the use of these monies that that mission can be fulfilled. Let's pray for the giving. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that uh, you have given us the means by which we can spread your word. We are grateful that you have given us the means by which we can be benevolent to people. We just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we give, that we will think of the mission of the church here on earth, that it is through this giving that... Uh, the mission can help to be accomplished through the work of us as Christians. Be with us in our giving. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song before the lesson is an old song that I haven't sung in a long time. It is 731, Take Time to Be Holy. The title of the song is Take Time to Be Holy. 731. <clears throat> Take time to be holy, speak up with the Lord, abide in Him always, and feed on His Word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing His blessings we seek. Take time to be whole. 
Slowly the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. Abiding in Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive, Beneath this control, thus led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou soon shall be fitted for service above. Thank you for. Uh, being with us in our song service. I hope that you were able to sing with us and hope that uh, uh, the Lord was praised and we were uplifted in, in uh, praising our Lord because he certainly does uh, uh, deserve and has earned uh, our great praise. If you were there this morning, you heard the kind of unusual title of tonight's lesson. I, I tried to do that so that uh, it whets your appetite a little bit, kind of makes you want to turn to YouTube at 6 p.m. and uh, involve yourself in the evening service. The title of this evening service is So Sad. So Sad. Uh, the, this lesson was prompted by something that was in the news uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, has been in the newspaper. Uh, it has been all over the internet. And there was a written report that stated that for over 20 years, a priest in the Phoenix area had said the wrong words when baptizing people. Thus, uh, according to the higher-ups, it made their baptisms valid, invalid. Now understand over 20 years, uh, this man had uh, baptized probably thousands of people. And here was, here was the small little thing. It amounted to a pronoun. Uh, the baptizer, uh, the, in the Phoenix Diocese, his name was Andres uh, Arango, when he baptized, had been saying, we, the pronoun we, baptize you, when he was supposed to be saying, I baptize you. Now, from what I understand, the issue with using we is that it's not the community that uh, baptizes a person. Rather, it is Christ and him alone who presides at all of the sacraments. And so it is Jesus Christ who does the baptizing. To me, as I look at this, I see a sadness. Hence my title, So Sad. It is so sad when men who are supposed to be spiritual leaders of others are so confused about such an important subject as baptism. And so let's examine what they were doing and let's put all of this in New Testament biblical perspective. And we will only use the Bible to justify what we feel like is the truth because it is the truth of God's word. 
First, the Bible does not teach that certain words have to be said when someone is baptized. Now, we do know that certain conditions must be met. We know that a person needs to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, this person has done this because he has either read or heard the word and understand that the word of God says that this is what has to be done. Repentance comes along with this. Repentance is having godly sorrow, is saying, uh, I want the things that I have been doing wrong, I am sorry for, and I don't want to do those things again. And finally, we are to be baptized. You know, he did not tell the baptizer what to say. Jesus, when he ascended into heaven, he said people are to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We find that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. In reality, if all conditions have been met at the time a person is baptized, the one doing the baptizing does not really have to say anything. Now, usually when I get a person into uh, the baptism position for uh, immersion baptism, I uh, say that because of your confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I am now going to baptize you. And because Jesus said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I say, I'm going to baptize you into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When this happens, a person's baptism is valid because the person has obeyed the command of God unto salvation. How sad is it to think that an honest, sincere person can't go to heaven because of what someone, the baptizer, either did or did not do. It's almost as if we're saying the baptizer is the one that determines whether a person will go to heaven or not. It's not. Jesus will determine whether a person will go to heaven or not upon the condition of meeting his plan of salvation. Beside the idea Okay, beside the idea that the baptizer actually has something to do with this is not is on, not only not taught in the Bible, it doesn't make reasonable sense. It is not fair according to human reasoning that somebody else, some person here on earth will determine whether or not I go to heaven or I go to hell. Second, let's note the words, all right? Let's note the pronouns. And let's note why it's felt that these pronouns are so important. Why the I instead of the we? Okay, the belief is that the I is because And I hate to say this, it's almost as if the priests are Christ on earth and that it is Christ doing the baptizing, not a man. Understand, that's not taught in the New Testament. At the very first in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when those 3,000 people were baptized, each of them was baptized by a person. Each of those people were baptized by being immersed 
into water and being brought back up. And so first, all Christians have Christ living in them. When? From the point when they are baptized. Now, people, this is scriptural. I'm not making this up. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. We baptize people because Jesus gave himself up for us. It's what we just dealt with in partaking of the Lord's Supper. Now, in uh, in 3 John, I'm sorry, in 2 John, verse 9, it says, Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in his teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. So it is through our baptism that Christ abides in us. Therefore, I or we really does not matter. All right? Uh, and to me, this is reality. This is the reality of the God's word. Thirdly, and by the way, I, I actually have a newspaper article. This was in the newspaper on Wednesday. Uh, and um, uh, a another aspect of this is that it says that when the baptizer baptized, that he either sprinkled or poured water on the head of the one being baptized. Now, it's so sad when we can't read the truth of God's word. It's so sad that we don't understand that baptism deals with immersion in water. It's what the term actually means. Bible baptism is is uh, shown to us several different times. In Acts 8, when Philip baptized the Ethiopian, the biblical text, right, the biblical text in Acts chapter 8, verse 38 says, they both went down into the water, Philip as well, and the Ethiopian, with the Ethiopian, and he baptized him. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, they take the word baptism and they use it in that literal sense and describe baptism as having been buried with him. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, the law of physics to me says that pouring water on someone or sprinkling water on someone is not the same as burying a person in water. So, in reality, it's not the we or the I pronouns in those baptisms that made it wrong. It is that the sprinkling and the pouring are not biblical ways that people are to be baptized. Fourth, people get baptized when they have met the conditions of baptism, when they have studied everything out, they have been taught, and they come to understand what the plan of salvation is. And so, there is instruction there. It must be a person who is of age enough that they know exactly why they are being baptized. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, 
If a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. If one listens and obeys the instruction that's not according to the Bible, he or she is not excused. It has nothing to do with a baptizer. It has to do with me. I'm the only one that can meet God's conditions for salvation. If I am taught wrong, the onus of responsibility still falls on me because we still have the truth of God's word to go to. We can find out whether what we are being taught is correct or whether it's not correct. A great example of this is found in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, where he talked about the Jewish Christians in the city of Berea. And he said, now these, talking about the Bereans, were more noble-minded than those of Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether they were so. They examined them. They examined the apostle Paul, an apostle, a Holy Spirit inspired apostle. They still examined and Paul complimented them for it. If they examined the apostle Paul, ought People who are to be baptized examine everything right up until that point. Following blindly won't get us into heaven. Following the truth of God's word will. How do I know this? Well, because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to that what he has done, whether good or bad. Not what someone else has done. Not what someone else has taught. It's what we have done. It is what we have learned and how we have responded in obedience to the truth of God's word. I would hope that those of us who want to be spiritual leaders in the church. Those of us who want to help others to come to the truth of God's word are cognizant of what the Bible says about salvation, especially teaching that end aspect of salvation, being baptized for the remission of our sins. And it's so Sad when people are willing to follow, follow others without comparing what others say to the truth of God's word. Jesus said it so succinctly. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. It is only the truth of God's word that can set us free from this world and that when we, uh, our life in this body is done, that our souls can ascend into heaven with the Lord. I pray that this uh, message has been thought provoking. Uh, you can uh, flesh it out yourself. Use the scriptures that we've used. Make sure and be a Berean. Make sure that the words that I said were accurate and uh, they made sense to you because I got them from God's word. You know, that that idea of baptism is, is our step to salvation. It is what separates the wheat from the chaff. It is what allows people to go through the narrow gate instead of the wide gate the narrow way instead of the broad way that leads to destruction. It is taking God's word for what it is when he says that we must confess that Jesus is the son of God, repent of our former ways, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. And if you are in that state that you have not yet been baptized, and yet you have studied this out on your own, and you've had some uh, help, and you've been taught 
and you need that to respond this evening, please call one of us so that we can help you and we can help you to take that next step to salvation. So we won't think that of the sadness that there is, that uh, we would follow something as blind people, rather follow the truth of God's word in all of its purity and all of its glory. As we end the service, let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this time that we've had together. We pray, dear God, that uh, we will look at the light of your word and use your word as the lamp unto our feet and the light to our path. Help us to understand that it is only through uh, following your word that we can uh, know the truth and that that truth can indeed set us free. There's so many problems in the earth right now, in this world right now. Pray that you would be in the situation in the Ukraine. Help calmer heads to prevail. Help us as Christians to pray for a, an outcome uh, that will uh, just uh, not cause so many people to die, uh, so many people to lose their freedom. I uh, pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would bless us uh, be with us this evening. Help us to uh, have you on our mind at bedtime. Help us to have you on our mind when we awake in the morning. Be with us, bless us, and comfort us. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all.